we started experimenting with different types of music. Is there a way to soothe that response in our brains? And we discovered there is. <laughs> Hey, Dr. Bill here, and welcome to another Meet the Mentor. Will Henschel is a 25-year experienced Los Angeles-based entrepreneur, inventor, and artist working in music, auditory technology, and neuroscience. And you're sitting there thinking, how does this all come together? We'll tell you in a second. He founded a UK band um, back in London called the London Beat. They had two number one best selling hits on the billboards. Um, he's also been awarded five US patents for his audio networking and neuroscience inventions. And today he's the founder of a really cool company, which I had no idea even existed until yesterday. And I've known Will for probably like five years. <laughs> yes. um, we're both members of, a, of an amazing group called Metal. Um, and it's, it's if you go to www focus at will.com. And you can actually do that while we're talking. Um, you'll get to a page like this. And basically what they've developed is a brain science based music technology platform that helps professionals be up to four times as productive at work. And I actually just did this. So when you go to this website, you push this start button. And then there's a series of six or seven questions and at the end of the questions what it does is it helps suggest to you what kind of music you can listen to that's going to make you more productive and i'll kind of just turn it over to will here and let him explain to you the basis for this uh -huh. and and what you're doing with this well i got really interested in one question uh in the last sort of 10 years which is how can I help people become their best self? How can we, how can we help you get out of your own way? Uh, uh, it's all about distraction. And so many times, this is true for everybody, uh, you, you're sitting here trying to do something and you're looking at a computer and you've got an hour to do some homework or to hit an assignment or to get a project in and your mind is just, you just can't seem to concentrate. And <clears throat> that got me really interested. Now, I know about the power of music. As you said, yeah, I've been a successful composer and songwriter. So I know that music has this power to move people. But I'm also a scientist. And I know that there are two parts of the brain. So there's something called my internal attention, which is me talking to you now and I'm using my hands and my eyes. <clears throat> and then there's my external attention, which is driving how well I can concentrate on this conversation. Now, there's no other sounds around us which means that I can concentrate on you completely. But if there was a sound behind me right now, I can't see behind me. My ears would tell me, wait a minute, and I'd have to look around. That response is part of our survival response as human beings. Right. Right. So what happens is we have this evolutionary uh, driven response to like monitoring our surroundings all the time. And if we're trying to work on a piece of homework or trying to get that assignment done, what's happening is that our ears are always checking for predators. <laughs> is that a sound? Is that someone bringing me a sandwich? Or is that someone going to hurt me, right? <clears throat> so that response is built into all of us. And uh, with my team at Folks That Will, we started experimenting with different types of music. Is there a way to soothe that response in our brains? And we discovered there is. It's really exciting. But it's special types of music. So here's, here's what usually happens. If you're in a loud place and you're trying to, as I say, do some work, do your homework, you put some headphones on and block out the sound. Now, if you listen to music you like, you've substituted one problem for another. Yes. Right. You've blocked out the sound. Right. And now you're listening to Eminem's new record, right? right. It's a bad idea. <clears throat> so we discovered in Focus at Will that there are specific types of instrumental music that do provably help sustain this uh, or help soothe the way that your non-conscious mind is constantly being uh, affected by things around you. Right. And so I'm going through and I'm answering these questions. <laughs> and by answering these questions, it's going to recommend to me what would be the best song for me. So after doing this quick little test, the one that it decides 
should be mine, and I think we're on mute here, so I'll unmute right. us, is called Electro Bach. Right. And I'll give you a little sample of what that sounds like as soon as this goes. But apparently there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <coughs> ten different types of music. And what they do is they basically you know, take this music and then they test people to mm -hmm. see how much more or less productive they are. And Will has found that people actually fall in, in well, one out of three people mm -hmm. do not do better with music. That's right. And they don't even have to do a test to see if you will or won't do better. Like, you'll know oh, yeah, right immediately. away. Immediately. Yeah. There's a funny story behind the Electrobark channel that um, the National Geographic, the TV channel, uh, contracted uh, contacted us and said, could we create a channel for a new TV show called Einst called Genius, which is about Einstein. Right. It was on earlier on this year. And they said they were looking for um, something that would help them promote the show. And did we know that Einstein used to play the violin to get himself into a flow state, I'll more about that in a minute, when he was trying to create his, his genius, uh, right. you know, uh, his <coughs> equations. And I knew which pieces of music Einstein liked. They were Bach, uh, mostly Bach right. violin pieces. And we've also done a lot of recent research on, on uh, trance electronica. And a lot of people like to listen to electronica, and it, electronica has this ticket, 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 ticket sound. And I knew that Bach music often goes da 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 And I started going, is there a link between electronica oh, and trance electronica and Baroque music? Right. And we discovered there is. Most Baroque music is half speed to electronica. You can have a string quartet and put them on top of electronica and it goes da 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 And we built this channel, the one that works for you, wow. based on research that National Geographic uh, 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 contracted us to do. One of the ones that I thought was most interesting is they have an ADHD D type one music. Uh -huh. And Will played this for me a minute ago. <laughs> and honestly, I don't... I mean, listen to this. It's, uh, let's see. It takes a second because of our internet, but when it comes up, I'll let you hear this. It's, um, yeah, ADHD channel. Um, wait, okay. I don't know if this is going to come through, but it's like, it's like noise. <laughs> it sounds like someone slamming a car door on a New York street repeatedly. Yeah. Who <laughs> wants to hear that? Well, here's the thing. People with ADHD, uh, about 15% of the population have some form of distractibility issues, and about 5% have severe distractibility. It's known that stimulants, Adderall and Ritalin, help people calm down weirdly, right? Right, because you overstimulate over them. The brain. Right. We have found that you can do the same thing with music at very specific speeds and keys and very specific uh, types of sound. And we built this channel, the ADHD One channel, with Dr. Ned Hallowell, who is the leading ADHD practitioner in the country. And with his help, we discovered you can really help people who have ADHD by listening to this music. Here's the thing. If you don't have ADHD, your reaction is absolutely, I, I personally, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, we have sat down with kids who are like, just super hyper. We put this on and they go, oh. And the That's parents crazy. are like, oh. I can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. So we're going to completely change direction yes. right now. Before we do, if you are a Leap student watching this or would like to sign up to Leap, go to our website, get our contact information. You can reach Charlie or James. And Will has been gracious enough to give us a code where you can actually get a one year free subscription to focus at Will. So this is only for students that have gone to LEAP or are going to go to LEAP. Yep. Uh, please contact our LEAP office, go on our website, you know how to do it. And uh, we will give you a free code, and then you can be a subscriber for a year for free at Focus at Will. I want to switch directions yeah. because one of the things I love about you is your creativity. You saw a need, you saw you know, uh, an idea for a product that could help people, then what? It starts with a need. Um, Peter Diamandis, who's the guy behind Singularity University. My friend. Yeah, friend of mine as well, common friend. He says, if you want to make a billion dollars, solve a problem for a billion people. Exactly. That is where it Did starts. Did you hear that? 
If you want to make a billion dollars, solve a problem for a billion people. Right. So what you really need to do to make a successful product is to create something that, that matters, that really affects people in a good way. If you'd like thinking of a, of a way to, to have a cheat in a computer game, right? It, it, it's not going to have the same impact. Things have changed incredibly for the better. Um, that there are tools online that you can um, you can get free web hosting. You can find free bits of software you can put together. It's very inexpensive now to try out ideas, especially web-based or technical ideas. Um, but the bit of advice I've got for any kind of business starting up is iterative development. What that means is test it. Let's say you've got an idea for a special new kind of taco, right? Completely nothing to do with computers at all. What do you do? I've got this taco. They're really tasty. Well, what you want to do is make 10 of them and try and sell them to people and then test it. This is great. Less onion, more, right? And then you build it and you bid it. And go out in front of a live, real uh, audience and actually sell it. Get real sales from day one. He's right. Test, test, test. Uh -huh. But then when you get something that's great, then what? Start to produce it. <laughs> start to produce it. And there are two ways of doing it. You can either bootstrap it where you don't get other money in and you just use all of your sales to build new, buy new materials and just keep trying. And that's what we <clears> that, did. Right? And that's what we've done in, with folks that will largely. Um, or you can take your idea and license it to uh, a major company. There's a lot of problems with that too. Or you could go on Shark Tank <laughs> and get a shark. <laughs> You'll get a shark when you go on a Shark Tank. <clears throat> But um, I'm a real believer in doing it yourself. Go out and uh, go out and, and sell it and test it and sell it and test it. And you know what Me happens? Too. People That's will what did. once you start getting some success, people will start approaching you. Happens right. to you. It must have happened right. to you. But right. All of a sudden, they're like, "Oh, wait a minute! This product is starting to get let's, the tacos." Now I've got the tacos, and they're being sold all over the country. I, I'd like to go back to something you said before, which is like creativity, and that is. Uh, if you're a teenager today, you have opportunities that never existed before. And uh, in the same way that Einstein, as I was saying, he's a scientist. He's a logical left brain scientist. He used his right brain creativity to come up with the theory of relativity. And you, I really encourage anyone who's got a science background, try a creative writing course. If you want to contact Will directly, what's the best way for them to do that, Will? Uh, will at folks at will.com or reach out to the website. and. Uh, I'm a huge supporter of Leap. I, I really am. It's uh, it's been very instrumental in my own life. Um, uh, meeting meeting some of the Leap students in the last couple of years, mentoring has been some of the most inspiring uh, uh, things I've ever done. Well, I, I can't thank you enough. A pleasure. Thank really. you, my friend. Thank All you. right. Till next week, Dr. Bill. Over and out. Bye bye.